it's a privilege to stand inside in a room in front of a lot of the coaches throughout the country and um, my experience and the context with which I will talk for the next 10 minutes is basically on coaching resilience and how we can develop resilience in children all the way through our sporting games, through football, hurling, and athletics, our handball and round rounders, and also to complement how that complements the performance on the pitch in a high performance setting and through the underage structures within our clubs. So my story started when I was 14. Um, I was a very young 14 year old, very, very green. And we went down to Wexford one afternoon. And we sat down in a hotel waiting for a man called Liam Griffin to speak to us. I was not expecting much, but I was expecting Liam to talk about the technical ability of the Wexford team to one the All-Ireland, how they were brilliant aerially, very, very physically strong, etc. But for the course of the next hour, all Liam spoke about was the mindset of the team. All he spoke about was the way that they visualised their success before they did it, how he researched the best papers on coaching from all around the world, and he brought it back into the Wexford team and he copied it, but all from a mental capacity and from the psychological model of success. So that's really what the presentation I have will be based upon. So what we did within my own club in Ballygunner is we, we had two very, very deep tragedies in the last five years, and I think they occur in every club within, within Ireland, there are lots of clubs, and one of them was through suicide, and the other one was through uh, misuse of alcohol. So we were thinking over the last five years that our children that play the sport are not just players, they're not just there to have success, they're not just there to win, but they're also children that their lives need to be developed in a positive environment through health and well-being. So what we did was last year we, we sat down, we got a structure in place, and we brought four or five key components together to talk about how could we develop resilience in the children that would complement our performance on the GA pitch. So we got some funding from a local pharmaceutical company. We took a pilot GA club, which was myself, in my own club, Ballygunner, and we started to put in, in place a system whereby we would be able to develop those children on and off the field and how they complement each other. So quickly, what we looked at was the holistic model, so the peak performance state, or where people, children, perform to their best. So we said with the technical aspects, which is the skill, the physical aspects, which is the speed, the agility, the quickness, and also the psychological aspects, which is motivation, um, visualization, goal setting, etc. And we took that model and we said, for a player or an individual to be at their best in life or to be at their best in sport, you need to hit all the key areas. So for example, if you take Usain Bolt, fantastically physically able to play for, his goal, his motivation when he was younger was not to be the number one sprinter in the world to break the 10 second, it was to play for Manchester United in soccer. So physically he had all those capacities. He had the speed, he had the agility, he had the quickness. Motivation was, that's all he wanted to do since he was very young. But technically, his skill set didn't allow him to have the ability to play for Manchester United. So he was missing a key component and as a result, he couldn't reach a peak performance state within that environment or playing football. So we kind of used that model, and we focused on two key areas. We focused on the health and well-being aspect, which came into lifestyle and psychological, and we also focused on the physical development, because anyone to be healthy and well in their life needs to be complemented by the physical activity that they bring to their livelihood. So we worked on speed, agility, quickness, and it focused on key development points for each age group, from the age of five all the way up to 16. So when we were researching this, we came across the flow model. And the flow model actually started in, after World War II. There was a man called Mihaly, Zygzent Mihaly. And he came out of World War II as a child, and he looked at how people, some people are very, very happy, even though there's been terrible destruction in their lives, and they're performing well in their workplace, in their sporting lives. And some people are very, very sad, and they couldn't get out of that depressive state after all the tragedies. So what he identified was, after 8,000 interviews, when he became qualified as a psychologist, he did 8,000 interviews across the world, from nomads to people who work as engineers, to people who work in schools, to people who surf, and he wanted to identify what makes people perform to their best. And what conclusion he came to is he identified two to three key areas that we honed in on in our club, that we could create within the young people and in the environments we had. So some of these key aspects would be that 
they have a challenge in skill, a challenge in um, activity that requires skill. So the, the area of challenge came up again and again. So every single child that goes into a coaching session, they need to have challenge in order for them to be at their best. So we looked at that in depthly. We also looked at the sense of fun, taking the adult out of it. When they were five and six years old, we let them play in an unstructured environment and developed our skill set in that environment. And accordingly, we followed a number of other ones where they lost the sense of self of time, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the flow model that we worked off. But what they found out, Zig sent me highly, really, was that the greatest thing he found out was our greatest moments in life, our happiest moments as people, they're not the moments when we're passive or when we're relaxed, but they're the moments when our mind or our bodies are stretched to its limits. So that's what's necessary for people to be at their happiest or in a performance setting, people to perform to their best. So we took the, the aspect of challenge and we tried to bring that into every single coaching session in the club at every single age group, all the way from six all the way up to 16. It sounds like a big objective, a big goal, but it was actually very simple because we boiled it back down to one or two activities that we could implement each phase of their development. So for instance, one month, We'd focus on a key area, a key skill that they would enjoy and have challenge in, and we did a different one and a different team for the following month. So from that aspect, the GA model would be that we co-creatively, and Pat Daly would have designed this, assist and challenge each child during our sessions. So that we're providing an environment whereby we're just giving them enough challenge just outside their comfort zones where they can stretch, become more skillful, and adapt and they grow accordingly. So that was a key component of every session that we brought. And for that model, in order to assist the children, we identified seven key areas. So they call them the seven Cs. And time is, on, is very important here. We've only three or four minutes left. So just giving you examples of how it actually practically occurred on the ground. For example, if you look at connections, the more connected children are in their clubs, in the community, the more reliable, or reliable they will be to keep going after the ages of 18 to 21, the bracket that Pat was talking about. So we implemented a buddy program whereby our senior players and our senior members of the club would be associated with each underage group. So some of the hurlers we have would have played in the All-Ireland Final out here, the likes of Barry Coughlin, Porrick Manny, Philip Manny, Stephen O'Keefe, to name just four. And all of those players had a certain age group that they were responsible for, and they'd come in and they talked to that age group on a continuing basis. But what they were building was connections between themselves, being positive role models, where the children could look up to and say, okay, I know that individual. If I'm ever in trouble, I can, I can speak to them, etc." We also got the parents involved. They came to some of the meetings. They got involved in the coaching so that they had the connections with all the individuals as well. That's just a simple example of connections. We worked on many other areas, one of them being coping skills. So we identified that from a health and wellness point of view, that the ages of 10 to 12 is the most challenging area for a child to perform because it's been taken from GA through football, through hurling, soccer, rugby, many, many different sports are taking that child to train every day of the week. So we identified a checklist that they would be able to fill in. Very simple, it had a smiley face, it had a, a very stable face and a happy face, or a, a sad face. And the child with their parent would identify certain areas like sleep, nutrition, happiness, and they would just tick the box in about 15 key components of health and wellness. And from that, it was a very, very quick one-minute exercise that gave the coach, gave the parent, but also created an awareness with the child of what areas of their being wasn't working well. And then after that, we could work on it and adapt it. So really, the, the whole process was about creating an awareness that in order for, to perform on the field, it's necessary to be healthy and well off the field. And that was just two examples that we worked on. We also looked at this model, and I suppose it's hitting the heart of many people, but we live in a kind of a VUCA world. So we all have this massive, I suppose, goal in relation to the GA. A lot of us do in relation to winning is so important. Overemphasize, as Pat said, on winning. But essentially what we live in is we live in a, a kind of a VUCA world. So, I mean, we're all happy and well, but then on a random Tuesday, something terrible can happen. So we kind of used the model of a, a table. And we said that life for these children is like a table. So on a random Tuesday, something can happen in your life, and it can rip that leg away from the table. And then two or three months down the line, something else can happen in that child's life and can rip the other leg of that table. 
But for us as a club, what we wanted to do is we wanted to build a marble pillar in the center of that table. So whatever happened to that child from the age of five to 16, that the skill sets that they developed were strong enough to withstand any of the life troubles that they would have. But not only that, because of the skill set that we tried to develop were so important to health and well-being, they were also very reflective of what's necessary for performance. So for instance, if they make mistakes on the field of play, that they can react, they can take a deep breath, they can self-control, and they can refocus on the next ball, very, very similar to what they were in health and well-being. So we tried to correlate both and get buy-in on that. So briefly, one of the key components of that was the growth mindset. And this is the second last slide. But the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So we tried to foster the growth mindset. So this is an example. I know soccer. Padraig Fanin will be up there looking down at me saying you're using a soccer example at a games conference. But it's the best example I could think of. Wayne Rooney, when he was 16 years of age, came in to play for Everton and made his debut. The first shot he took was outside the area, struck it into the top right corner. He was physically strong, he was already arrived on the scene, and he had all the ability he believed he needed to have. When Cristiano Ronaldo was 18 years of age, he came into Manchester United, from Portugal, went into the depths of winter in England, cold days, meeting tough people, and he basically got bullied. He got physically pushed off the ball, he could not, I suppose all the skills he had, he could not develop or he couldn't show because it was a different environment. And automatically, as a result of that, Wayne Rooney's mindset, if you ask me, was very fixed, and he thought he'd arrived, he had all the skills necessary. But Cristiano Ronaldo, he knew that he could grow and he could learn from anything. So he saw failure as an opportunity to grow, to get better, and as a result, he went to the gym. He built himself up. He asked Alex Ferguson, what do I need to do next? He trained his body. He trained his mind. He stayed back after training, and he grew and he grew and he grew. And when he became 28, he became the best player in the world. And he won it four times after that. But purely, if you ask me, because he had the mindset, the growth mindset, that no matter what happened in his life, he could grow and adapt from it. Whereas, Chris, uh, whereas Wayne Rooney, on the other hand, believed that he had an innate ability in himself, and that was just stable, and it remained stable over time. So when you talk about health and well-being performance, if a child meets a challenge in life, and they believe that they can overcome it and grow from it, that's the essence of building a marble pillar. So the practical application of that I've just outlined briefly, we worked on a buddies program, some meditative exercises, genuine reinforcement to the, the kids, overtraining checklist, uh, worked on comp competency and skill sets, and the most important part of all, that mistakes are our greatest teachers. And we praised effort and we had rewards structured from that. So finally, the two things that we should give our children. One is roots, so that it can remain, remain stable throughout this I suppose the VUCA or the volatility of life and sport, and the other is wings, giving them the confidence and giving them the ability to see and believe in themselves. So, briefly, thank you very much. <clears throat>